So Good Notes 5 is finally here and I'm going to go through some of the new features, the changes, some things that are missing out of it, and the experience I've had so far with it. So the first and most obvious change is this home screen. You've got a whole new folder structure. Before you basically had a list of folders and then you could have one subfolder. Now you can have unlimited subfolders. It's just like a normal file system. It looks pretty similar to the stock iOS file app, and I think it works pretty well. It's definitely miles ahead of GoodNotes 4 in this respect. You can sort your notebooks and folders by date or by name. You can also go over here to the side and press that button, and that'll turn it into a list view instead of just the normal grid. Much like selecting pages when you're in an actual notebook, you can press this button up here and you can select notebooks to move them around, duplicate them, or delete them. Or you also have a select all button. This is all pretty standard interface stuff, just like everything else on iOS. Going into one of these notebooks, you can see we can now vertically scroll. Finally, we needed this so bad. This makes taking notes so much easier. I always hated when I got to the bottom of the page and then my wrist would basically be rubbing up against the bottom of the iPad because it's not completely flat like a piece of paper. So I always like to write at the top and then just keep scrolling down as I write. And now I can do that in good notes like I could in Notability. I don't like Notability, but I had to use it every now and then because of that. So. Aside from that very obvious change, you also have a toolbar across the top that's different. It's now two bars instead of one. I don't really like that change. I think they could have fit everything into a single bar with some better choices, but I digress. It's fine. Aside from the aesthetic differences, you also have some new writing tools. And to demonstrate that, I'm going to go into a notebook that I've prepared here. For this demo zoom in a little bit and if you go up here to your pen you'll notice you have three options you have a fountain pen a ballpoint pen and a brush pen the fountain pen is an enhanced version of the default pen in goodnotes 4. it looks very similar but if you move really fast it gets thinner and i imagine this is good for writing in cursive i don't write in cursive but I'm doing this at a weird angle so I can't actually write. I have a microphone in my face. And so you also have a brush pen. The brush pen is very similar to the fountain pen, but it can get much thicker with pressure sensitivity. So this might be good for drawing or uh, maybe even cursive. I don't know. I like it. I like that it's there. Don't, probably will never use it, but good that it's there. Then you have the ball pen. This is just a non-pressure sensitive line. That's all it does. And then over here, on this side, you've got three options for thickness. I was really disappointed because I thought these were your only thickness options, but you can actually tap into here and you can make these whatever size you want. Pretty sure I had that on point four. And again, it was the same deal with these colors. You can tap one of them and you can assign them whatever color. So it's more shortcut based. Whereas before you had to go into a menu every time. Now you can keep your favorites up here and maybe it can save you some time. The lasso tool, like you saw, still works the same as it did before as far as I know. You also got the shape tool. It works the same as well. Good for drawing graphs and whatnot. The highlighter also works the same, but something that's pretty cool is you can draw something and highlight it. And now in the eraser, you can choose to only erase the highlighter. I was hoping that could be a feature before and now it is, so it makes me very happy. You've also got size adjustments for your eraser. I don't think you can adjust these granularly. I think it's just presets. Obviously, you've still got your text tools, and they work just how you would expect. You also have the colors. I don't use type tools in GoodNotes. I pretty much only write. It's my notebook. 
I don't have a keyboard in class most of the time. You have your magnify tool as well. As far as I know, it works the same. I don't use this in day-to-day -day note taking, so if there's subtle differences, I won't notice them. But overall, it seems functional, and I haven't like seen any issues with it. But again, I don't use it in day-to-day -day tasks. Going back out here where you're making your notebooks and organizing them, there's a new interface for doing that. You have a plus button here in every folder, and it gives you options as to what you want to make. You can make a notebook, a folder, you can have an image and use that as the basis for a notebook. Uh, same thing with the camera. You can import a PDF, but you have this new thing called Quick Note. But you have this new option called Quick Note, and what happens when you press that is it just goes ahead and makes a note with the default settings. I think it's whatever you used last, but I'm not entirely sure. But you can just make a note, whatever you'd like. And then when you go in the back out of it, you can save it. And you can rename it up here. It'll give you some info and stuff. But if you just back out and save it, then it will be there in that folder that you made it in. And that's a great feature because previously, if you wanted to make something quick, you pretty much just had to pick an existing notebook and write it down really quickly and then move that page out later on. And that's just not an ideal situation. When you're writing your notes, if you go into the settings menu over here, this is all pretty similar except you have the scrolling directions, um, your document editing, you can copy a page or rotate it. Uh, your templates though, these are new. They improved the writing templates. You have different paper sizes and you can choose between yellow and white paper. I like the squared paper quite a lot. Something to note if you use the square paper. Um, let me go into a notebook where I can show you this. Uh, economics. The new paper, the squares are slightly smaller. So that might bother you. You might like it. I don't really mind either way, but that's a thing that you're going to notice probably. They are slightly smaller. I do have the 10.5 inch iPad, so that might be because of the smaller screen. Maybe they just put one paper template instead of two, like for the different screen sizes. I don't know. So yeah, the templates may be sized a bit differently than you're used to. Going into the actual app settings. They're kind of sparse right now. You've got your handwriting recognition language. You have the document editing section, which is basically the only substantial settings we have. You have the tool position. You can move the toolbar to the bottom if you want. You can turn off automatic screen locking. You can choose to hide or show the status bar. You can make it where it defaults to opening documents as new tabs. And of course, your scrolling direction. And then the rest of these are pretty basic, just nothing new. Obviously you have iCloud. What's missing in this version is automatic backup. They said they're going to put that back in, but it's not here yet. I think that's a pretty big deal, and I hope they get on that pretty quickly, because if iCloud were to mess up something, then all my stuff would theoretically be gone, aside from what I've manually backed up. You got your search indexing and, of course, your templates. You can import new templates if you want. So, let's see. Notebook templates. And if you go down to the bottom here, you can click import right there. And then, I think you can just use any PDF as a basis. Maybe even images. But that's how you import your notebook templates. Speaking of templates, there's a lot of new covers. These covers look really nice too. Look at this. I really like these. And then again out here in the file and folder section you can search and you also have your favorites. So that's pretty much the interface of GoodNotes 5. 
when I first got it, there were some bugs that I found with responsiveness and particularly how it rendered new strokes while you're writing. And I reported those bugs and the developers got on that, that just today. They uploaded a fix to it. So I waited until today to do the review and walkthrough because if they hadn't fixed it, then the app was basically useless to me. It, I couldn't write properly with it because it was bothering me so after that fix i think this is a great app and i'm definitely going to continue to use it this is my notebook i don't even use paper anymore but yeah if you're looking for an ipad notes app this is definitely the one i say you should check out and that's been it for this video leave a comment telling me what you think about good notes 5 do you like it do you like the new features are you disappointed in some of them specifically what do you think of the new menu bar setup Anyways, thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video.